The presentation was uh, by a David E. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. You can take a look at the uh, name. He, he wrote a book called The Remarkable Reefs of Cuba. We'll read some from the introduction of his book. And also I will show a few of the videos of his presentation. He starts out saying that since 1970, the Caribbean has lost, lost half its coral reefs. Marine scientist and conservation leader has a front row seat to this disaster. But when he began a new chapter in his career in Cuba, he found something completely unexpected. Hope. After years of watching reefs deteriorate, David was astonished to come face to face with Cuba's remarkably healthy coral reefs. The past 60 years has seen the worst decline in the ocean's health in human history. Cuban's oceans and coral reefs remain remarkably healthy. A living laboratory, little seen by this generation of scientists. And part of the reason for that was that Cuba was rather slow in getting industrialization there. They still use plows pulled by oxen. In his book, I'd like to read a few some. paragraphs from it. It says, this book contains dozens of interesting views of friends and colleagues, Cuban, American, Russian, for some, it includes their elegant words as a, as a guest lecturing to my graduate students at John Hopkins University. For clarification, the title of the book refers to Ocean Doctor. This was a name given to me by my daughter many years ago. In the body of this book, I sometimes refer to Ocean Doctor, which is also the name of the nonprofit organization I run. In some cases, I have changed the names of individuals to avoid bringing unwanted attention and risk. I have worked under the umbrella of several organizations under the 20-year period covered by this book. I have not always specified which organization I was at the time, opting instead for the pronoun like we. I'm telling stories of hope, as the title promises, requires understanding why hope is needed in the first place. I therefore must drag my readers through stories that are much less hopeful, some downright depressing, in order to set the stage of why Cuba's coral reefs are truly remarkable. I tell this story from my own perspective. I do not want to give the impression that I am by any means alone in collaboration of marine scientists in Cuba. The coral reefs I grew up with here in America have changed over the years. It's amazing what's going on. It's not only global warming, but it's many other things going on. Cuba is indeed a paradise, not only of incredible stirring natural beauty, but also incredible resilient and gentle people whose warm hearts have welcomed me again and again. I have forged some of the most meaningful friendships of my life. And now at a time when all seems lost, it is a paradise that offers the most pre precious gift of hope. He signed the front of my book to Ramblin' Rusty. Thank you for your important work as an educator. Today we can save the coral reefs. Dave.